Guys, how are you? Waco from Revolution here with uh, a man I admire immensely and I think is probably the greatest leader in, in luxury watches today, Cyril Venero. How are you, sir? Thank you, Wayne. I'm very happy to be with you and uh, don't be flattering like this, you know, it make me kind of feel shy. Okay, well, I mean, your results speak for themselves, but uh, indeed, sir, let's just say that I have a lot of admiration for you. Um, Thank I, you. I have so much admiration for you also because I, I remember, you know, you were telling me the only certainty is uncertainty. Right? Yes. And the best way for us to, even though we're amid an amazing time for the watch industry, to prepare for the future is to ensure that the brands that we represent or the watches that we're creating, as, as speaking from your perspective, of course, um, have a singularity and a durability. Yep. Right? Absolutely. Sing singularity meaning that there's nothing else in the world like it. Uh, and I think in, as far as Cartier is concerned, you have beautifully repositioned Cartier once again to be the king of elegance. Thank you. And Thank you for it and durability from the perspective that a watch could be a hundred years old or even older and its iconography is just as relevant today as it was the day it was born and we've seen proof positive of this in so many instances. Thank you. Cyril, can we and, talk about... And uh, one other part is that uh, our singularity is to be plural yes. and you can see that the diversity of what we produced this year yes. which is quite uh, amazing but all of them looking really Cartier whether it's very pure or exuberant, whether it's old or new, yes, all of them say only Cartier can do that. Do you agree? I absolutely agree. And I think that that's what's unique. I mean, there are some brands which are, you know, sort of monodimensional, and I think the plurality, um, the multiple dimensions and multiple universes of Cartier, all of which are super iconic, is what is so engaging about it, you know? Um, so perhaps we can start with the the homage to the famous Tonk Chinois. Yes. And this watch is really intriguing to me as well because even though it is a Tonk Chinois, there is a fresh update to the style of the watch, to the case of the watch. Yes. Tell us a little bit about this piece. So the uh, original Tonk Chinois is square. Mm -hmm. And this one, uh, to make it more contemporary, has moved to be slightly more rectangular. And uh, the origin of the, uh, of the design inspiration is from the uh, temple entrance, you know, in the Japanese story or in a, Chinese also entrance to the temple. Yes. Uh, with kind of a s simple shape of pillars and a lento on top of it and something to make it absolutely recognizable. And uh, the, the Tong Shin was. I'm sorry, 19, guys, one of you guys is going to have 20s. Thank you. Sorry. Was absolutely square and it's something quite uh, also um, simple and a bit rough. Right. So when we thought uh, to make it more contemporary by extending slightly the volume and also having more details and, and rounded some part polished, make it in some way uh, more appealing to this time right. while being still the same. So it's a no match, but not exactly like, like the same. And also having some variants with um, a liquor and some design and motif in the middle. Right. And the version, my favorite one, the one which is skeleton. Yes then make something absolutely amazing and beautiful. What I really love about the skeleton version is, and I always love how you say that, you know, technical innovation is important, but only when it serves the needs of beauty and elegance at Cartier, which I think is completely correct. And that watch is a very beautiful example of that. You've got a skeletonization of the movement, but um, applied with this wonderful use of lacquer to make something that is truly beautiful. And so that way we get in some way double inspiration for this one, or even triple. The, the first one with the Tang Chinois in the design of the watch. Right. But they have been, you know, in the beautiful collection of uh, Pendule Mysterieuse, several of them, which was from Chinese inspiration as well, right. with the pillars and then the mysterious movement. And so this skeleton and transparency bring that as well. And there was also some reference in some of the other Pendule Mysterieuse also for us of some Chinese design uh, Art Deco style. Right. And putting that also the red motif for the three. So in some way, these three come together in something and it looks perfectly balanced. Yes. And that's what I like. I love that as well. I think that's absolutely lovely. Um, can we go from there to the Pasha, but this time returning with the famous grill motif or guard motif. Tell us a little about this and also now it has the practicality of being able to be removed as well. Yes, because the, uh, there was a Pasha grid and it was also uh, present uh, about 10, 15 years ago, but needed a kind of tool to, to, to screw and unscrew right. it. This one wanted to have it also designed in terms of shape to be really matching with that and with also the curved set. Yes. And also you can just do on your own. Well, you need a little bit of, a, of a 
think, uh, experience to do that, and depending on whether you have nails or not. Right, so, of course. So in here, we'll uh, be careful. But it's what you can do on your own. Yes. And you don't need any, any specific tool. Well, I was really impressed also that when you take it off, when you put it back on, it, it lines up perfectly as well. Yes. And um, I think it was being explained to me that there's actually a blocking mechanism that Absolutely. prevents it from over-rotating one, one way or the other, which I think is brilliant. Absolutely. So meaning you can do it on your own, yes. but it stays, it stays uh, still. Absolutely. And it's, and it's blocked, so it's a security. Of course, otherwise you can have, it after some time, especially when you go, right. something moving too much and you don't really want to lose it. Yes. <laughs> so it's both kind of uh, integrated, it's simple, efficient, and then safe. Amazing. Well, let's talk about one of the most iconic watches of all time. Uh, it is, of course, the tank Louis Cartier and extrapolated in two different versions uh, this year as well. And you remember last year we had relaunched the tank Must? Yes. And we had some kind of a monochrome dial, right. which was a kind of homage to the 1970s. Yes. Uh, and saying that how popular this model had become, we say we have to go on, on the Tangle Cartier with the gold version and then take the same thing of the dial, but with a little bit of uh, technicality, meaning the brush on the dial being so subtle that it's also an image of the Art Deco on one color and only the fact that the way it's polished makes it looking different. So if you move it, you yeah. see the volume coming out. That's extraordinary. So it's a very delicate, and you can see that the volume comes out of it when you move, just by a different way to polish the dial. So it's very simple, but again, very sophisticated. That's what we like. And the same thing on the other. Right. Gray on gray is also beautiful. And we have tried other colors that will come later on. Really, really beautiful. And I love this, that at one moment you have dials that are super exuberant, and at the same time you can make a Tank Louis Cartier that has a dial that's very minimalistic as well. Absolutely. Such as something that's almost in pure black as well. Even without indexes and just a Cartier signature. I mean, this watch is also absolutely fantastic. So that's upon pure and exuberant can be Coli Cartier. Right. We have some part with the purity of shapes. Right. And the tank is probably the most, the purest of all. And you have other, other ones which are just gorgeous, like the Cousin others. And the attention to details on each of them is the same. Right. Because to be minimalist without being cold is an art by itself. Ah, that's absolutely true. You get to be minimalistic, but it's yet be warm and inviting and be extremely charming. In, in your the, if someone is too minimalist, there's yes. something missing. Yes. And, uh, and on, on that, uh, there was an interesting comment by a uh, uh, Korean Japanese artist, painter called Lee Ufan. Mm -hmm. And, and he has said that if it's something that is nothing, then the mind cannot, 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 cannot uh, hang on anything. Right. That's why even in Japanese tokonoma you have one flower. Right. And one flower represents the entire universe. Yes. And, and you must have something simple, but one little thing that will make both your eyesight or your sense of proportion just fine it's right. Yes. Like in a yin yang, you have yin and yang, and you have a little bit of black in the white and white in the black. Yes. If, if there were not, something would be missing. Absolutely. So there's this notion of balance and equilibrium that come to have something that is sophisticated, even if it's minimalist. Something a little bit decorative in something which is not. Yes. And vice versa, when you have something exuberant, it has to look simple. That's a kind of art of balancing contrast. I love that. Can I ask you a sort of generalist question? I think we're, we're now amidst one of the greatest markets we've ever seen for watches. And certainly, um, as you said, the, 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 the brands or maisons with singularity have really risen to the top. And, and you know, yes. we've seen extraordinary success with Cartier, which is incidentally now the, the, the number two watch brand in the world. Yeah. So congratulations with Thank that. Thank you. What do you attribute this market to? This Is it a, a growing um, interest in watches from the general public? Is it um, a, a sense of, of exuberance because uh, we seem to be exiting the pandemic? I mean, what do you, what, what do you think is the reason for this? Uh, I think there are several reasons for. In some way, there was uh, there been a question, I would put the other side, when uh, people were questioning whether the connected watches or smart watches would just kind of uh, outpace right. the luxury watches or make them irrelevant in some way, because you can have something much more functional. But what has happened at the same time is that, in fact, you have many, many ways to get time. Right. Many, 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 many. You know, uh, on your mobile phone and on your computer and on your car and your washing machine and the <laughs> microwave, <laughs> in the pharmacy, in the street. Right. It's quite difficult, in fact, to, to avoid. Not, not to have some <laughs> reminder of time anyway. Yes. So in some way, if watches are less and less useful to tell what time it is, they tell who you are. Right. And, and more and more. And the more so we come to a, a kind of style where 
anyone can have the style he or she wants. Right. Uh, before that, there was some more kind of social codes. I say how you have to dress, and I have to show your style and elegant by the way you dress. Yes. And even dressing for the daytime, for dinner, so the kind of codes linked to dressing were really strict. But more and more, it's becoming more casual and more simple. So if you want to have something both comfortable and simple, but expressing your style, what would you use? Right. Watch plays a big, a big, a big part Huge, of it. Huge, yes. Both for men and women, or for anyone. So the, uh, the part of, uh, of watch as part of your signature and style is getting stronger and stronger. Absolutely. That's, that's one, uh, one factor. Uh, and jewelry playing the same, the same role. Absolutely. We see jewelry and watches playing more a uh, role to define your identity compared to your fashion style. Yeah. Especially for those who don't like to be in fashion and don't want to kind of change fashion all the time. Right. Um, then knowing that families, for instance, are living in different countries now it's a kind of norm that uh, children go to studies in different places from where their parents live with. Right. Uh, so I uh, have uh, one daughter in, uh, in Sydney, and another one in Paris, and right. we're living in Geneva. And many of people around us are doing the same. So all my children are studying in London, studying in the US, studying somewhere. And my uh, uh, daughter, when she was in Paris studying, she made a, an exchange year in Singapore, in National Uni University of Singapore. Right. She stayed there for a year. That's awesome. And so that's a kind of norm. If you want to transfer something to your children or offer something precious, what would you do? You cannot transfer silverware or bone china or furniture is too heavy. Yes. A precious thing that can go basically from one to the next, basically is watches and jewelry. For clothes, you have usually a different kind of feature. Yes. Depending on age and your style. Of course. And uh, when it comes also to, even for some bags can, can also transit, but that's, the more they are linked to fashion, the more difficult it is. Absolutely. But that's where watches and jewelry play the role of being a transmitter across generation. So the more you have brands which are really iconic, and the more you have those who have specific design and singularity, the more they fit this role to be a transmitter towards generation. Yes. So it's playing a bigger and bigger role. And then third element, what's come also in, uh, into the uh, durability and sustainability question. I say, which are the fashion items that you can continue to wear over and over? Right. Watches can be repaired. Of course, you done properly, very long. Right. Jury the same. If it comes to metal at some point, you can even remelt and redo. We can replace the movement. And that's what we have been doing, you know, when we restart the, the Panther to offer some free repairs. And we saw the products coming back to life and people were super happy with it. So watches and jewelry are part of the most durable part of luxury. There are some questions coming from uh, overconsumption of some other part because we have to reduce opulence in some way. But opulence means we have to avoid instant gratification, but not true luxury. If you wait something long, you know you have waited few months for this one, right? Indeed, sir. We made it for you. <laughs> Thank you. You deserved it. Uh, well, that's very kind of you to say. And so that you now you're happy to wear it. I think the problem of luxury was that instant gratification of something you forget the next day. Indeed. You have to work hard for it. You have to be happy for it. And you have to be happy to wear it long. And then at some point to be happy to transfer it to someone else, whether it's from uh, your own or pre-owned market or whatever. And watch on that have a role to play because it can last very long, especially when you have design can be 60 years old, 100 mm -hmm. years old, at the tongue, and you, everyone, the new generation can find its beauty. So I think our mission is to serve beauty in time. Fantastic. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, no. but, but if I could ask you, you know, what I love about this is exactly what you were saying. When I look at this watch that's on my wrist, I simultaneously look at the past. I look back to 1967 and I think about the era into which it was born. But I also project myself sort of into eternity because I think it will endure forever and it will be passed from one generation to the next Absolutely. generation of my family. And that is extraordinary to me. And I think that there must be something about this which is also driving the secondary prices of Cartier watches into the stratosphere. Because we've seen in such a short period of time, you know, we have a, a very good mutual friend, Nick Fouts. Nick, you know, was telling me that his Cartier watches, he used to just wear it while he was bicycling around London, and he can't afford to anymore. He has to keep them in the safe <laughs> deposit box, right? I mean, what do you attribute this to, and why, why, is it, am I correct? Is it people realizing that these things are iconic and that they're going to endure forever? And what do you attribute to the, 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 the massive surge in secondary prices for Cartier watches? Um, we used to have a really strong secondary market value or vintage pieces for Dewey meaning the Tutti Frutti necklace or bracelet was always doing some record sales in auction, whether it's Sotheby's, Christie's or others, but not for watches. And we wondered why. And so the, probably at some moment, the kind of sense of Cartier identity was not there. Mm. Uh, but if we, as a, 
Nick had also said, he say, when he said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm longing for the CPCP Cartier, yes. Collection Privé Cartier Paris. And then he said, oh, no, what do you have done on all the Cartier CPCP? Yes. All the Cartier is Precisely. iconic. Yes. And by having all the Cartier iconic, then we say that those who are the Cartier lover loved it again. But then also put in not only the iconic shapes, but also the beautiful shapes that come in one after another, with the crash, with tank centré, and tank asymmetrique, and the cloche, and the tonneau, and the tank chinoise. Then also those who were in love with this beautiful shape say, oh, we're really happy that they're coming again. And because of the social network, and say it's so easy now to find what can be interesting, even for a few, but when these few are not so few in mm -hmm. reality, yes. worldwide, then it comes to those know that when these pieces come to the uh, auction market and then they're ready to bid for really expensive price. And so what we saw that was just kind of us gradually shifting in the past two, three years really went kind of skyrocketing. <laughs> yes. Meaning that, uh, that there, there was a large number of people who say we really want this one. We also saw something surprising that when we launched the Tonk Must with the monochrome dial, yes. on the second market it went double the price. But yes. So when also seeing the models like the Crash doing an incredible amount, oh, all the uh, the uh, Santos with skeleton also coming in secondary market at yes. higher price, meaning for some specific model we saw some clients we really see we want this one in particular and we are ready to really pay the price because we know they will last forever in terms of design. We do also that someone we also ready to buy. If you're the only one with something that can last forever, in some way you say maybe it's bad investment. But if you know others are like you, then you get encouraged to do so. So what has come is that Cartier has been the brand for the many, but also for small numbers, and also for those who want something unique. And we have the, we have the three layers that have grown simultaneously, which is something show that there is a paradox in the past that say, at some point, there is a limit to what you can get because people get tired of it. But we're coming to a, to a, to a place where, in some way, it's as far as the number of people small number but connoisseur want the same thing then the price can go with sky as a limit i think it's and, and we have seen that we have regained not only the heart of general public of those who were the cartier lovers and can like a panther or a love and so forth but those who are in love with the crash and those who are in love and will be in love with this one or those we in love with that one and i'm sure that one in 20 years from now is a mass mysterious will have incredible value on the market because we'll do very few you, you know, Cyril, I, this is a really interesting watch for you to, to bring up because when I saw it yesterday, I was like, this is so wonderful because this is exactly what you were speaking about when you have technical innovation, but to serve the needs of beauty and elegance, right? Absolutely. And here you have, obviously, an homage to the mysterious clocks with these wonderful indications, you know, hands that are placed on sapphire crystal discs. But then on top of that, I couldn't believe it when I first saw the video when you presented it, that it was an entire movement, a gear train, a barrel, and a, and a balance wheel on the mass itself. Yes. You know? And, but it was worth it to do it because it, it makes people smile. You know? Yes, Would you and say I say, that? wow. Yes. And so when we say we, we don't want to be necessarily in a complication too much, but we say that when, when those can be really interesting and match what we stand for, right. then we, we work hard on it. Okay. So this one took eight years to develop, but when we see it, you say, oh, it's amazing. And again, no one has done that. Only yeah. one image is not doing that. No. And that's where it's very Cartier as well. Yes. So when, because when we say we would do fewer complication because it's not our main, it doesn't mean we have no interest in there. Right. And that we don't go into it, we don't go seriously. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Because doing that is quite a, you know. It's uh, extremely serious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cyril, thank you so much for joining us. It's always, it's been a revelation. Every time I sit with you, I actually learn things. And so I, I feel at some point you should, um, you know, give a course on like, a, <laughs> on, on how to, uh, to run a luxury brand and how to sort of um, become singular and durable and perennial. Thank you so much, no, sir. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Mine. Before we break, I actually have two things that I need to give to you. Um, so you have uh, two awards from Revolution. Uh, the first one is uh, for the best concept for this is uh, the, for the Cartier Tank Must Solar Beat, which incidentally I thought was amazing when you launched this last year. Thank um, you. I was. So delighted that you obviously recognize the um, the importance of sustainability for yes. the future, and to create and, a world. And, uh, and the, the question which was raised, say, uh, if you want to to uh, be relevant to younger generation, why don't you do connected watches? I say no because it's too perishable. Yes, we have to do just the opposite. Do something which is the most sustainable, the longest design with the longest movement in the newest version. Absolutely. So bravo! Congratulations for that, sir. Thank you. Um, and Thank but you. we have another one for you as well. 
which is brand of the year for Cartier, which wow. is, I mean, for the totality of what you've achieved, the incredible secondary prices, the fact that now when people think of watches, any collector that I know thinks of they think of Rolex as the king of sports, they think of Patek as the king of complications, although I know you have complicated watches, but they think of Cartier as the king of elegance. And those three names are the pillars that are a rise above everything else now. So congratulations, sir. And that's thanks thank to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Ray.